Hello, everyone. Happy New Year. Here we are on New Year's Day. I can't believe it already. It's crazy. Um, so I'm Cheryl from Tinker's Cart Art, and welcome to my page as well as my Craft Around the Clock um, segment this morning. So welcome. Thank you guys for tuning in. I know it's a busy day. Um, it's a holiday, so maybe it's not so busy. Maybe it's maybe it's kind of a good day to be hanging um, hanging around here. Let me see. I'm going to. Uh, uh, switch the screen around so that you can see me. We're going to paint a fun little winter polar bear design this morning, which you can also use as um, for a Valentine's uh, thing. We can add little hearts to it. So say hello when you're in here. And I'm going to play around with this so that you have a better view of what I'm doing there. I might bring that a little closer too. So we're going to paint a cute little polar bear scene, just a little version of this one. This was a painting we just did in my art membership. It was a fun painting and it's a winter painting, but what I did on one of them, I want to just get that right for you so it would be easy for you to see. Hi, Cheryl. Good morning. Hi, Charlotte. Happy New Year, you guys. Thanks for popping in. I was um, kind of running late a little bit trying to get the camera just right here for you. And Charlotte, I don't know if you painted this yet. Charlotte's in my art membership. So um, this is one that we painted, but I added a little, just a simple little heart. It could be used for Valentine's Day. I have some great Valentine's ideas for you guys coming up too. I can't believe it seems like I have hardly shut off Christmas and here we are with uh, looking ahead. So um, Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Tanya. Thank you um, for being here. Thank you guys. Um, it's going to be a fun day. We are back to our schedule today at Craft Around the Clock, so please stay tuned, check the schedule out, and um, sit back and enjoy the crafting. So what I do up for many of my paintings, not everything, but a lot of my paintings, I start with a pink base. I use um, just a pink acrylic. I use quinacridone, um, but you can use any kind of a pink that you like. I thin it down a little bit. Hi, Linda. Good morning. Happy New Year. And I'm going to do this. I'll start this one, show you how I put it on. It's very simple. And then I have this dry one to start painting on. So I do like uh, Conacodrone uh, Magenta for that. I use Liquitex. There are other brands. Um, I'll put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing here. <laughs> Hi, Linda. Happy New Year. And I just took a little bit out and I just thinned it down with some water. I'm going to see if... I know I sometimes like to have you guys see my palette too a little bit. I'll scoot that over and I'm going to just add a little water to my pink. And I and I really do. It's just a little wash. It can be streaky. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I'm using a gallery wrapped canvas. I like these one and a half inch gallery wrapped canvases. I also paint on wood panels too. But uh, whatever the surface you like, it could be a smooth wood panel. It could be a textured canvas. I still start some of my paintings in the pink. I really like the way the colors pop on it and I like to try to leave little bits of that pink showing through in the painting as well. I, when I'm plein air painting, you hear me talk about that a lot, I love to plein air paint. I start most of my canvases regardless of where I am in this pink. I just like to tone the canvas. That way you've kind of gotten rid of the white. It's not so intimidating. It's not like, oh gee, I have to cover all this white canvas. So you can see it can be streaky. Just put that pink on there and let it dry. Um, I see everybody popping on. Hey, tell me, tell me if you celebrated how you celebrated New Year's. I'm not a big New Year's Eve person. I kind of like to just be low key and, and go out for an early dinner and kind of be in. Um, so I don't know. I would love to know how you guys celebrated the holiday. So I just did that quick little wash. I'm going to let it dry. This one I already did. It's already dry. That's what we'll start on. Now, in my in my membership and in my classes, I will usually, if it requires, give you a tracer to copy on. So don't worry about, oh, I can't um, draw. I can't, you know, how am I going to start? I give you a tracer if it's something like this. I'm going to sketch on because my tracer is much bigger. So I'm going to just use a piece of chalk and just sketch a few polar bears on there. This is kind of annoying having that right there. Let's see if I can move that a little bit. Not that it matters. Let's put our one that we're drawing there. There. Um, oh, darling. I, I, I got my computer screen a little far from me so I can hardly read it with my... Um, Oh, Dahlia, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Slept, yeah. I um, went to bed early too. So, hey, George, good morning. Um, I hope you had a nice New Year's Eve too. 
And so here's my little painting. Like I said, I just have two versions because when I put a little heart on, um, and I'll just use them as a guide. So they're a little, it's a little smaller in here. So I think I'll just paint one polar bear just to show. I just want to show you the technique, how I start with an underpainting. People start with different, people use different color underpaintings lots of times. Um, I have used red quite a bit. I have switched over to pink now. Um, you can use orange, yellow, whatever you like. And it's just like little pieces peeking through. So can you see how I've left um, little bits of the pink peeking through? I just think that is is just kind of cool. So I'm going to just do one polar bear here. So I'm going to just give myself a, a foreground. So that's just a little line. Something to keep in mind when you're painting, though, you never want to divide your canvas completely in half ever. You always want to have your, your center of interest or your horizon line or whatever, either above or below the center point. We have a pretty low foreground here, and then we're going to just put a, some mountains in the back. Pretty simple. I'm using chalk to sketch with, which is great because you can erase it and start over. If you did it in pencil, I know at least for myself, I will do it in pencil if I'm on my tracing paper and I could keep redoing it, but I'm on the surface. I don't want to keep going over it with pencil as I'm drawing. I want to have either a good idea of what I'm doing. I want to trace it on or if I'm sketching, I want to use some chalk. Um, so there we are. So we got that on and let's just do, I like this little polar bear guy that's kind of lean and it's got that typical polar bear shape. So again, I would uh, give you a tracer if you went in a class, really. You wouldn't have to worry about sketching this in. Kind of looks like a little bit like a dog there, but that's the shape of them. And a little paw forward, and then he, of course, has an ear, a little eye. Very simple. He looks like a big dog. He's like a St. Bernard. <laughs> I think he needs a little thinner nose. But anyway, we will get started and jump in. Don't need a lot of colors for this painting. Um, and so I'm going to grab out, I need white, of course, and oh, was I got a new thing of white because I go through it so fast. So yeah, tell me what what um, what you like to do for the for New Year's and New Year's Day. What What's going on today? I think after my segment, I need to run to the store. I have, my pup is not feeling great. I was up with her like every hour last night. So I'm going to go to the store and get her some rice and boil up some hamburger to give her kind of a bland diet. Hey, Vicki. Good morning from West Virginia. Um, hello. I'm in Florida right now. So um, let me straighten that out there. It's going to bug me if I'm kind of crickety. Um, pull that down so you can see the reference photo too. All right. So some white. Yeah. So I'm going to go and get boil up some a bland diet for her. She's always got little belly issues going on, it seems. So I'm getting a little tiny bit of blackout, just a tad, just for their eyes, really. Um, and in the painting itself, I have used a little bit, I think it was kind of like an orangey red, but I'm just going to get a little orange out. I can mix that with my pink. Oh, I moved it over. I wanted you to see, but I'll move my cup of my colors here. White we mostly use. I use that teal in the background. I love the way the teal plays off the pink, and you've probably seen me paint an awful lot of teal and pink. I do like those colors. Oh, and you know what I love, and I might throw a little in, is this coral blush. It's kind of like a salmon color. I love that. And the melon as well. But we'll give a little bit of that. It just kind of goes nice. I know you've heard me speak before about picking out my color palette. Sometimes that's an important part of designing my paintings is thinking about the colors. I don't want to just jump in and throw in all the different colors under the sun. It just looks a little disjointed. Um, so I would have a limited amount of colors, four or five maybe. I will mix them freely within each other. But I don't want to be grabbing greens and blues and all the colors. So I want to kind of keep it a little simple. So let me get out. I wanted a dark, like a uh, midnight sky. So, so a navy blue, a Prussian blue, something like that. Um, okay. So let me get out. This is an ultra blue deep. I can mix it with a little black. But can you see how I've sort of put the blue in the sky here? I've used a little blue behind in the shadows. I've got a little bit of the teal. I've brushed some of the teal and even some of the pink on the sky after. It's hard to see, but it just gives the sky a kind of a, a cool look. I will take some of my core colors and add them in places probably that they ordinarily wouldn't be, but it makes, if it works in the painting, I don't care if the uh, sky really would have pink in it or not. Thank you, Vicki. I appreciate that. So we're going to get this teal. This is uh, a Laguna. Uh, I like the deco art Americana paints. There's a lot of cool teals. I do show you how to mix a lot of your colors so you don't need to have all of the colors. But I do, um, 
I do like to buy all the colors too. I try to keep it down. I don't have a lot, but uh, I want to show you if you want to get started very simply without buying all the colors, I do like to show you how to mix your colors as well. Okay, so we've got our paints out. I'm going to use just ordinary brushes, whatever you might have. I use a lot of flats and some rounds. Um, I'm going to start with the sky and move down because that way I won't put my hand in it. So that's generally how I work, either what's furthest back, forward, or, you know, a lot of times that, of course, is at what's at the top. So I'm taking some of my blues here, and I'm just going to put them in. And I'm, you can see how I'm kind of doing little kind of crisscrossy strokes here. I'm trying to do it a little sparse, showing some pink through. So I'm not trying to get a careful little coverage of that. I'm just going in with this. Hello, Cheryl. Um, I'm going up to my line on my mountain, but I do like little bits of pink peeking through even on the edges. So I'm not worried about following along and getting it perfect. This is kind of a fun technique because you can be loose and you can have fun with it. Let me grab a paper towel. I, a lot of times we'll just go from one color to another by wiping off my brush. Um, so I usually have a paper towel handy for a few different techniques. Now, while that's wet, I'm going to just dry off the brush, like I said, take a little bit of white and just a little few little strokes of that here and there. You can see I'm using that kind of crisscrossy textured kind of stroke. And I just wanted a few light areas. A lot of times in my skies, I will do that because um, sometimes the acrylic paint is a little light and see-through. And if I add a little white, it does uh, make the color a little more um, uh, solid, You could, uh, concentrated. You, it would help with the transparency of the color. And I just want to say hi to everyone who's popping on. Thank you guys so much for watching and spending some of your holiday with me. So got just a little bit pink still peeking through. When I put the little pink on the sky after I dry brush it, I like the texture of that. And right now it would just simply mix with the blue and turn a little purpley. Uh, I want to just highlight a little pink in the sky when it's dry. And I also just take uh, a, a cute <laughs> a toothpick or a stylus and I just make little dots. A lot of times for snow, I will spatter with a toothbrush, but I like the graphic look of the little just dots and a few of them I make into stars. It looks kind of like a cool night sky there. All right, now I will rinse my brush because I'm going into the teal and it's a little lighter. Hello, Sandy. Welcome. And Cindy, hello. Great to see you. Thanks for being here from Webster. And same with um, what I just did. I'm taking some teal on that flat brush. I'm going to kind of crisscrossy it on there, but I'm not covering the whole thing. I'm leaving bits of pink showing. I just want a little bit of an underpainting for those mountains. This is sort of a whimsical style. It's not super realistic in any way. I'm using whimsic whimsical colors, and it's sort of like almost like a little fantasy scene. It's not, you know, the, the, the uh, a realistic photorealistic kind of a thing. So look, I'm just going to do that. I think I'll go with a little white now while it's wet, so it kind of blends a little bit. And when it's dry is when I'll go with the heavier white to get that white look. And I want to do the same thing, actually, the snow that that guy's sitting on. Let's do the same thing. And I just like these little crisscrossy strokes because then it just, um, I'm, I'm putting these, these strokes down purposefully. I'm just making these strokes. I'm not trying to just fill it in. Um, I like to use the strokes as kind of part of the design. So we'll grab a little white, same thing. So this is going to give me a few values of the color. The teal out of the bottle straight is the darkest um, of the snow. By using a little white and letting it blend, it gives me a middle shade. And then with the strong white afterwards, we'll go right over the whole thing. I'm going to base coat him a little differently. I don't, he's white in the mountains and the snow are white, but look at, he looks a little different and a little warmer because I put a little bit of yellow in him, a little bit of a peach even. So let me get out, I wanna use more of a gold than a yellow. This is a yellow ochre, deep ochre. It's uh, not as harsh as a cold white. It's a warmer yellow and even some of that uh, salmony color, which coral blush. So I think I'll just take a little bit and just getting a little bit. I'm going to add white to that. It's looking a little too deep for me. So I'm going to add white. And can you see it's a nice creamy gold color? And I'm just getting a little color on there for now. This is all just base stuff. And then we're going to go on, add the whites, and then the final details like the eyes and the nose and all those things. Um, oh, Indiana Sandy, welcome, welcome. Um, a little bit of this because I just want to warm that up a little bit. 
And I'm no rhyme or reason. I'm just getting a little bit of it on there. I want to divide my lines. I want it to be a little darker in the little lines. You could go ahead and do it with, I might just do it with a liner brush. I could do it with the chisel edge of this brush. Or if you're more comfortable, you could just use a little round brush of sorts. Um, so I think I'll do that. I'm going to just do it with one of my dark blues. My dark, I like my Prussian and mix a little bit. So I have Prussian blue here. It's a dark navy blue. has a lot of black in it. And I'm mixing it with my ultramar ultramarine or it's ultra deep in the... Uh, Deco art, and I'm thinning that down. I'm going to do kind of a wash, just as a little divider here um, uh, around my bear, because we've got white against white. So let's, you know, divide it up so we can actually see him from the background. And let's see, his little hind quarters here, little foot. This is a little dark area. This we can use as our dark. I may mix it with the pink paint and make it a little more purpley. Uh, maybe add a little purple in there. It could be more of a purple. This is a kind of a washy bit here. And the, the little uh, paw, the little front leg there. It's gonna, I'm going to divide it here so the foreground and the mid ground. Here's a little bit of a paw just hanging out in front. You know how the polar bears look sometimes. Hey, Katie, good morning. Nice to see you. Thank you for popping in. I'm going to give a little idea where the ear is so, because there would be a shadow behind that and then the little inset. Just give a little dab, dab where the eye will be just so we know and the little nose and he'll have a little mouth after, but we could put it in there now. He has a little tiny bit of a smile there. Okay, so I've got that blue on my brush. I'll get a little pink on it. I'm going to put a little bit of purple in there. I'm going to just really water my paint down some. Really water it down because this is going to just be a little bit of a shadow, just some variations. So I'm going to have a little shadow here. It's dark in between here. It would be dark where this front leg comes out around his ear. Shadow is sort of there from that blue I put on, a, a little bit around his eye. But I just wanted to get a little more in there. Super simple. I'm going to do a little more purple here, too. I'm going to get a little more pink in that purple. So maybe right in here. There'll be a shadow around him. So let's just bring that out a little bit. It's more of a line here. I kind of want to have it, you know, like a little wash. So that's just accomplished by putting a little water on my brush. Oh, thanks, Vicky. Oh, yeah, Charlotte, are the kids back to school tomorrow or are they off again? I forget. My uh, Woody was just asking me if my nieces, and I thought, I think they go back now. Um, and I've got some other fun things, which I will show you, Charlotte, because you can get a little sneak peek here from what we have coming up in the membership this month. So I do have an art membership, and I do do classes online. This this coming this year, my one of my resolutions is to – uh, really upload a lot of just single classes because sometimes people don't want to do the whole mem all the membership things. They, um, you know, it's a great deal, but sometimes you want just a one-off class. So I'm going to try to do that for you guys who've been asking for that. Um, oh, the ninth. Oh boy. So are they off like almost two weeks then? So maybe my nieces are off still. Looks kind of funny there, doesn't it? <laughs> looks almost like um, looks like pink tissue paper or something underneath. Let's keep an eye on our time. We we have until one with plenty of time. Let me show you quickly. I'm like I said, I'm working on some ideas for Valentine's Day. So this is something I just did up. And you know it was fun and it's sort of new. I haven't done too much of it, is the gold leaf. Have any of you ever worked with the gold leaf? It's really fun. It's kind of taking getting taking getting used to it because I've already I kept spilling the bottle of the, the stuff that adheres it on. So that's all over the place. But and the little sheets of gold leaf are very filmy and flimsy and it's kind of interesting i just did a huge painting i'm not going to bring it over it's huge 30 by 24 and i used gold leaf in the background i'll upload a picture of that later i just finished it so i'm kind of playing around and i think in the membership charlotte we will for our next topic next month we'll talk about gold leaf and then we'll do this little painting you can see how it's shiny so i was debating on how to paint it to look like gold foil in between the chocolates but I kind of like this where it's not shaded and highlighted. It's just the gold. Wouldn't that be fun for a little, for, I don't know. I just think it would be fun just to hang up for Valentine's Day. I almost wish now I did it on a huge canvas and perhaps I will. I'm going to show you one more thing and get a, 
Ian, because I'm a terrible, terrible painting namer. I am awful for titles. Um, so I did this one for us next month, and it's a winter scene. And I need titles, so you guys throw titles out for me. And here's another painting I started with the um, started with the pink. No, I didn't. I started with kind of an orange, kind of like the salmon color for my underpainting. And then I dry brushed a little yellow on top, leaving that showing through. So this one needs a name, you guys. So help me out with that. And let's get some white and start building up. So I will build up white on top, but it will be a little bit of a layering look. So I'll go back with some of that turquoise on top uh, and, and back and forth. And of course, now I'm looking at all the paintings and saying, oh, maybe I could put a little bit of gold leaf in there, like little stars. It's really cool. On the big painting I did, I took the middles of, of the flowers and did little dots of the... So what you do is you put an adhesive down, let it set about 30 minutes, put that thin gold leaf on there, burnish it a little bit, pull the excess away. So I did the little middle of the flowers, just little dots of the adhesive. So I have little gold dots in the middle of the flower. It's pretty cool. So anyway, that's that. So um, anyhow, so if I'm new to you uh, and welcome to my, to my Tinker's Cart art, and please, I would love it if you gave me a follow. And um, if you are one of my Tinker's Cart peeps, and you're new to Craft Around the Clock, there's a link in the description, and that's a fabulous place to see lots of crafting going on every day. So check it out. Hi, Cecile. Happy New Year. Um, let's go ahead, and since I'm going to go in the top, let's get a very light pink and just dry brush a little in the sky. And so this is pretty much like the pink that was on the background. I've mixed it with a little white so that it will show up. Again, if a color is a little translucent, a tiny bit of white will help it with, with the coverage. And I'm just doing those same little crisscrossy strokes and it's hardly noticeable, but it will, because we do have pink showing through the background. But again, I like to layer it up a little bit. Um, sometimes I would even put some of the teal, but we'll decide about that later. Let's go into our white now. And let's start with the mountains. And I'm going to do, use the same flat brush. I like to use a flat brush when I'm doing these little strokes. I've been painting a lot lately with these little intentional brush strokes. They're fun. And I like the quality it gives to some of my paintings. So we'll go with some white. And I'm going to try to paint paint the paint with the paint very thick because being on the canvas with the little nooks and crannies, it's a little bit more to get them to sink in. If I was on my wood panels, like this little painting here is a wood panel, and I easily got my little strokes to show up. But on the canvas, I have to use a little more pressure and a little heavier paint. So I'm going to grab more paint than that, and I'm going to just kind of give me myself these strokes. So they're little squares almost, uh, but just go ahead and put them on however you like. Again, trying to keep a little mindful of leaving some of the background showing through. I do go back sometimes with my underpainting color and fill in if I have covered it all up because I do like it peeking through a little bit. So we're going to just go and fill in this little mountain. So for the edges, for instance, sometimes I will go and just pull it down. I might go sideways and I'm just going to fill that in. I see my purple's a little wet, but I kind of like the way that looks. It's giving me a little bit of a purple underpainting. I'm going to layer it. I'm going to build it up till I get some really bright areas. But this is a nice mid, this will be a nice mid-tone for us. So did anybody give some of their hand crafted and hand painted things for Christmas gifts this year? How did that go? I always love making some things for uh, gifts and I always love receiving handmade things for gifts. It's really one of my favorite things. Ornaments, especially ornaments. I love decorating my tree and looking at each ornament and remembering where it came from or made it. Sometimes as I'm traveling, of course, I will buy ornaments. So it really is kind of a trip down memory lane when I'm decorating. And this is just going to matter of building it up brighter in places. So now we've got our first little layer of um, the mountain. Now remember, you can be as graphic as you want or blendy. If your style is more of a blended style, you don't have to try to get it to look just like mine. That's not the purpose. I want to show you how I do things and then let you go ahead and 
make them your own. So I do, uh, do not ever try to paint it and say, oh, but mine doesn't look like that. I want it to look like yours. So there's no right or wrong. Okay. So just go ahead and give it a try. If you are just a crafter and you haven't painted yet and you want to, it's a great way to get started. Just a little step-by-step -step instructions like this. I may, since my canvas, this is a little six by six, and these were bigger, of course, I'm going to go to a little smaller brush, a little smaller square brush for the boy, for him. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going with just my white, and I'm going to just get the coverage on there. It doesn't have to always be the little squares, especially on him, because I have to kind of get some shapes here and there and fill in some tiny areas like the ears. So... On the big parts of the body, I can get those little square marks, but on the, you know, getting in between the little features and whatnot, do not worry too much about that. My little eye is going to go in there. I'll do the little mouth with a little fine liner brush after. The ear, we'll just get that in. And if you need to ever go to a smaller brush, just feel free. Oh, Sandy, that's a great idea. I think that the teachers really appreciate that. I think I read an article or something recently on the teachers and what they like for gifts, and they loved um, handmade things, and that's really thoughtful. I think it's a great idea for, like, the bus driver or the postman or anything like that. Oh, cool, Cheryl. Yeah, I love those little round wood slices. I, I have them out still because I don't think they have to just be for Christmas. I think I'll do more of a little series of more little woodland creatures on there. So that might be fun. Okay. So again, I had a little bit of wet paint there. It blended in. It's not a worry. And I'm going to go on top of these uh, this white after and put a little more of that yellowy gold color in and just whatever I think I need. The little front paw will get in there. And then this one that's closest to us. I might go in and shade a little more if I need to. I'm going to put a little heart on this and put this for sale in my shop um, as a little Valentine's thing. Maybe I could just write some little phrase across the bottom even. So what sort of things, now that the holidays are over and we're done with the nutcrackers and the snowmen and all the Christmas, are things you want to paint? I have all kinds of ideas. I've been sitting for a few days. Just I, I make little um, notes on my computer. I start little folders of ideas and uh, sketches and things. I have a sketchbook that next to me usually that I'm putting some ideas in. So, Oh, you know, I do have another nice color that I like to use sometimes in this. It's just that pink. Let's, well, I could just mix it with my quinacridone. Let me see. Oh, there's a purple too. Oh, this. I love this color. This is a vivid violet. It's a deco art color. Again, we can mix all these colors. If you took your red or your pink and your blue, add a little white, you'd get this color too. Sometimes it's easy if I use the color a lot just to have it in the bottle, but super easy to mix these. And if I'm doing a long full length class, I would give you all the instructions on how to mix things. Oh, thanks, Charlotte. I know I would charge um, much, much, much more for one paint night that I would do um, than the monthly membership. And then that's a, that's content every single week. Um, Charlotte, your calendar will come out today. I will sit and do that. So you get um, two recorded uh, classes one, and two live, one live class and one live. We hang out and we talk about painting and we show our paintings and we deal with, you know, if you have any issues with painting and I usually do a technique. So next month we'll do the gold leafing. Um, so you can see my, te my teddy bear, my polar bear is pretty see-through. I'm going to just take the same strokes, the same paint and just hit it here and there. I don't want to go over the whole thing and have it really bright everywhere. So I'm just hitting it here and there with the brush. Oh, yes. Um, I have a lot of St. Patrick's Day things, Sandy. I um, when I, I retired from my business in February last year, and I, and I uh, have, had an Irish import store for almost 30 years, actually. And so doing the paint nights and the store, I have a lot of Irish cottages and a lot of Irish designs because I would sell a lot of my own paintings and things. Um, so take a look on YouTube. I think I have two or three Irish cottage tutorials. 
some shamrock ones, um, uh, St. Patrick's Day gnomes. So I have a lot. So I'm just trying now to think up some new ideas. So throw them at me if you have any thoughts. And maybe, you know, it's, it's something somewhere. Because I know gnomes are like, you love them or you hate them. Somebody mentioned somewhere reversible. So I was thinking maybe like Valentine's on one side, get a wood cutout. Valentine's on one side and, you know, Patty's Day on the other might be cool. Or just, yeah, leprechaun or leprechaun gnome or something might be cool. I'm going to go and grab some of that gold I had before because I want to warm them up a little bit. And I just want to keep it from being flat white the whole way. I know we have a little pink showing through. I know we have a little bit of our shadow color. Um, but let's get a little warmth in there. And again, I don't worry too much about, oh, the polar bear wouldn't be gold or orange. I might take some of that salmon color and put that in here and there. And I can always go back and... A little white on top if I think it's too much. Um, a little bit of that gold on his front leg. So see how he's getting, he's a little warmer now, standing away from the cold background. I'm going to go jump back in with the bigger brush and get my mountains a little bit brighter in places. So same technique, I'm just going in with the white, and I'm just going to just make those strokes. When you're doing this sort of thing, just pretend you know what you're doing. Just put those strokes down like you intended to put that exactly there. Have I? No. I'm just kind of winging it. But if you just go with purpose and do the strokes, it's really fun. And you never know what you're going to come up with. And now you can even see the difference between this one and this one. This, has got the sec this one's got the second coat. I still have some darks showing through, but I've got a little bit brighter in places. Yeah, reversible things. I've got to think about that for holidays, like Easter coming and whatnot. Wouldn't it be nice to get double duty out of some of your uh, decorations? I'll be thinking about that. And I'll be out thrifting a little bit to see if I can find some cool surfaces to paint on. I still didn't finish my Christmas ball. You guys saw me start maybe the big, huge Christmas ball. Not really Christmas. It's actually an ornament, but I'm painting just a winter scene on it. So I figured that I still can do this month because I'm not worried about it. I would hang it up all winter long. It's like my little ice skate. It's little winter scene, little ice skaters, kids on sledding down hills, that sort of thing. It's not uh, specific to Christmas. So I'm still going to work on that. As you go, kind of overall, look at your painting and, oh, he needs a little bit of a brighter bit here and there. You can just touch it up as you go. Let's start getting some snow down here. This is just how I started up above. If you missed that, I just went over my underpainting with strokes of white. And, um, and on the edges, like I say, sometimes I just go down. Sometimes I go across. I just vary it. Again, without any pattern. Just do it, step away, see if you like it, give it a minute, come back. So I have the line here where I did the separation and it's nice because it separates it, but I don't want it to look like an outline. So I'm gonna be a little more conscious now of kind of breaking it up in a few places. So it's just not a perfect line. It's a little broken up now. Okay, same up here. I have the line. Let me just go up against the line a little bit because I don't want it to be too much of an outline. I'm going to go back and put a little bit of teal back into that mountain. And I want to go onto him. So this is this really dark is bothering me. I'm going to go and get maybe like a little bit of a lighter purple or something. This Oh, this color that I really like. It's kind of a purpley. And I'm going to just lightly go over this shadow. I don't want it to be as harsh as it was. So I'm just kind of just lightening it up. I could go with a little white on there. You can still see the divider, d the division of it, but uh, his ear needs to be a little brighter. The first coat of the white just really sunk right in. So let's just kind of, as much as we need to, the acrylic paints, especially the craft acrylics like this are thinner and don't cover as well, but we just are patient and we, just let it dry and then put another coat whenever we need to. And you can just keep adding as many coats as you want, but you kind of want to let it make sure it dries first. And I usually love to go in and throw my little features on because they look um, like they have personality then. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back into my sky a bit because I know I want to leave a lot of pink, but I need to go back now and I'm going to just go in with a little more blue. 
I can I don't want that much pink showing but I'd rather do it so that there's too much and then cover it up than to cover it all up and then have to try to get the pink back in there so and I like the way the second coat of some of the blue shows up there I'm going to rinse my brush I might try a little bit of teal in that sky as well so the teal here and just a few little strokes i just like the idea of carrying the colors through and we will do let that dry now and we'll do our little stars and things i always want to check if you have a comment or a question throw it in there if i don't see it um, i will certainly answer it later on uh, let's put our little features on him now i'm going to get the smaller round brush his eye is simply a little almond shape really it's just a little almond shape. And then we just are going to put a this little white highlight in it when it's um, dry. He has a little nose. It's just kind of almost like a little of a heart, a half of a heart shape there. Again, I'll give that a little highlight with just a little teal after. And then a little tiny line for a mouth, but I try to make it curved up a little bit. So it's a little bit of a smirk or a smile rather than looking like a frown. And we're just going to put that in here. It's just barely like a little bit of a smile. And they do look kind of like black holes until they get that little highlight. So it's important, even on something that small, to just give it a little highlight. So shading and highlighting is how you make your little objects look three-dimensional. He needs a little more white because he's looking a little bit too yellow. So again, I told you it was going to be a process of building up. So I'm going to go back with some heavier white here. I'm not going to do every little bit. But can you see how it's starting to cover a little more? And I still see a little of my colors from underneath. But again, I'd rather have you start and just add to it as you go. And he already looks pretty cute. I don't think there's too much we have to do. If you have lost any of your lines, you can very, with a washy look, just kind of put them in here and there. I think he's outlined enough. You can see how he stands out from the background. Super simple though. Some of these things are just, if you know step by step where you're going, they're pretty easy to paint. Going a little heavier in some spaces there. And I think his little paws need a little bit of attention. We'll do that. I am going to tuck a little white. I just like the way the little white tucked in there kind of makes it look like his belly. And now a little tiny, tiny dot of white. I know it's teensy, but if you just use the very tip of your brush, it would be easy enough to get in there. So I'll get a little tiny tip there. And it's simply, I want to put my hand in the wet paint, so I'm going to turn them upside down. It's just simply a little white just a little dot there, almost too hard to see. Now I'm gonna just wipe off the brush, take a little of my teal, and actually a little white to it. I want it to be pretty light. I want you to be able to see it, but I don't want it to be just white. And I know it's a teeny little, teeny, teeny, teeny little detail, but I am just gonna go on the nose and make just a little, little highlight there. It just adds a little, it's just that little extra touch really. And the stars, so I have styluses, but you can use a toothpick, like I say, the tip of the brush. Um, I have some little styluses that I use. Uh, thanks, Cecile. They are cute. I was trying to think of um, more for Valentine's Day. I was thinking maybe little owls or fox or some cute little animal painted with a heart or something. So I always welcome ideas too, if you have any at all, okay? Um, and so I just dot the stars now i do both ways and you might want to do the spattering with the snow you could certainly take your toothbrush you've seen me do it great for stars and great for snow oh this one i i was spattering metallic gold paint yesterday it's kind of sticky uh, i had a huge mess yesterday when i paint big I, this was a huge painting and i don't have a huge space i make such a mess it's awful but you can also take watered down white paint dip your toothbrush in and then just pull back and spatter and you get a really fun snow look sometimes on my illustrations more illustrative things i want it more graphic it's all up to you again is there any right or wrong no there's no right or wrong hedgehog oh good idea excellent yes that would be something a little different i was trying to think iguana like something different 
Um, I love that idea. Good one. I will definitely pursue that. So next week is going, you know, I'll start doing some more Valentine's spring things. Um, and I'll try to think of some reversible things. So that will be good. So I started with just the little dots. You could very well leave it like that. I kind of liked the look of the stars. So I took white paint, really thin it down. So many things you can do with your star skies. You could make it look like northern lights back there. You could put a constellation. You could put the Big Dipper in. You could put a shooting star in. So many little ways to tweak the paintings and the things that I give you and make them your own. So always try to think outside the box. Don't worry about changing it up because the way the teacher taught it. It's nice to, we'd love to see you take off on your own and do these things. All right, so I'm going to, just to make those little stars, I go ahead and I just make a cross, you know, an X. And then I make, kind of make shorter, I kind of make the, the star look like a little bit, um, I go a little smaller there. Sometimes I, I actually am aiming to do it. I know this is kind of far away. Let's do one here. I, I, I like to almost make the cross part a little higher up. So if I go longer on this end and this end, and then short, you know, here, and then these shorter, I like that sort of star shape. I know it's weird. You can do any star shape you want, but I sort of aim for that. And I'm thinning my paint. Every time I take a brush load of paint, I'm thinning it down still. It just needs to be thin if you want it to flow nicely off your brush. That is the problem. People say, I can't paint a thin line. Sometimes it's just that the paint is too thick or the brush is too heavy. Um, it's not always that you can't paint it. Now, you could use a very fine um, paint marker now. You know what else you could use, which is really the only gel pen I have found. This is fabulous. It goes on top of everything. If you do mixed media or painting or whatever, it's the Uniball Signo. And it's the only thing I have found that kind of writes right on. I won't do it now because that little dot is wet. Oh, we could do it on this one though. Watch. We could do it on this one here. So these white pins are amazing because you can go right and to sign your name and everything. So because it's a gel pen, it's really fine. A paint marker, you'd be hard to find it that fine, but they're great for signing a dark area too for your paints. Um, it's like I said, it's a Uniball signal. You can find them at all the craft and hobby stores, more like in the scrapbooking department or where the pens are, um, you'd find them there. So we have a few minutes left three whole minutes and this was nice because this was an easier project and it wasn't rushing because sometimes I'm rushing to finish oh and so I don't do this on every I like to leave some dots and some little stars you could put a moon up there if you like want to see the easiest part of the whole painting is a little heart would you see how simple it is um me too Charlotte I buy them even when I don't need them because I'm afraid I'm going to like run out. I keep them in my sketchbook. They're great when you're sketching. You want to add a little white or watercolor. You want to add a little white in that you lost. They're perfect. So I'm taking just my quinacridone pink here. See it? I'm just taking it with that little flat brush. And if I want to put a little heart on his chest, say, I've got a little hair there. Let's move that off. And I just use two strokes. One, two. And he's got a little heart there. Um, let me show you how I did that because it's so simple and you could do it. I'll do it. Let me do it with the bigger, the bigger brush because then you can kind of see it better. So keep, keep your paint so it's a little bit, you know, loose. But the paint's been sitting out even for this little 45 minutes. Um, it, it thickens up and I want it a little looser. I don't want it to be watery, but I want it to be able to flow nicely. So I load my brush just with that pink and it's just press and pull and press and pull and you get a nice little heart shape i love it for if you have a pattern and you're doing something that you have a little pattern you're looking for like dots and plaids and whatnot you can just go and make lots of little hearts i like it to do them with the flat brush you could do them if they're small with the detail brush though you could just certainly just kind of press and pull and make little hearts it's practice and sometimes it's mindless practice so it's fun you can sit and just practice the little brush strokes and it is kind of a nice way a little zen time for yourself 
Um, so look at, we are right at one o'clock. I'm going to hop off. Stay tuned for the next crafter. Refresh your page. I will see you next week. Have a great one. Thank you.